It's now time for Hello, Mr. President. It's a segment on the show that's focused solely on you and problems you're facing in your communities. We want you to be active participants on, of your own development. And the way to do that is to let us know if there are any problems hindering your growth. It doesn't matter where you find yourself in a country, your voice is important. All you have to do is take out your phone and record an up to one minute video. Send that video to us via the email, hello, Mr. President TV at gmail.com. Or the WhatsApp line you see on the screen, 0550-585832. And every Wednesday at 9.30, we'll show those videos and call on to policymakers to do something about it for you. If you don't have a camera phone, don't worry. You can actually text it to us in no more than 250 words. So let us know exactly what you're going through and what you want the nation to do to make life a bit better for you. For today's topic, we're going to go back to the Western North region, revisit a video that we watched last week and talked about, and then speak to the DCE. Let's take a look at that video. JHS 1, JHS 2, and I will be sano. I will need Dex. JHS 1 need Dex. Can blocks I ask you say, JHS 1 is trans to see and then we have Ghana. Ghana and this is the two class. And then we have Ghana. JHS 4 at the blocks, JHS 4 my friend. And Kola wa hai diya at the Biasi and the Suya diya. Na mi na yo ma dumle JHS 4 my friend and o ma ba be PM e wa ha. And ti ombe o kopai JHS for classroom. Temporary JHS for BS2. I also am saying code BS. Many of you can censor it too. And the in case you say JHS for what? And I can censor it by and can call it a hint. And I'm over tonight. Censor it all the whole day. And they just say Adisuya. Any other try and Koso for the whole day. Ghana. Adena ya kasa ya 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 hong abrosa. Any mama. Pani ni bi ya minister ni bako school abuche. Pani ni bi ya MP ni bako school abuche. President in my empty school of Ghana. They have a phone call on the free of charge, so they are caught camera. They are exposed to this cannabis. They are buying this. They are dying for power and crime. They are dying for power and crime. But they are not caught on the free end. They are holding. They are falling. They are money. They are going abroad. Money being paid and collected by the government. Oh my God, Ghana for. Okay. Now, man, you should call us. Money being collected by the Ghana. Money being oh my God. So that's Sefi Akatisu in the Western North region. There are so many angles to the story, right? First of all, the children are sitting in something that doesn't even look like a desk to study. The classroom they are in does not even belong to them, right? They are perching because the JHS students are out of school. So if the JHS students were to be in school, they would have been under a tree. What quality of education would these kids get compared to their counterparts in Accra who are probably in private schools? How are these kids going to be competitive? How do they rise out of poverty when at that age we are already starting them off on a wrong foot because they don't have the resources, they don't have something as basic as a desk to study in, they don't have the conducive environment to be able to concentrate and excel academically. So then the cycle continues. They, they, they go as far as they can with their education. They, found, they find something to do in their informal sector. They get kids, their children stay like this, and then it just goes on for generations to come and we failed them because we could have stopped this. We could have brought them desk, we could have put them in a nice environment, we could have helped them concentrate in class, we could have helped them get all the resources they need to achieve academic excellence, so that one day they will break that cycle of poverty that they found themselves in. But because we failed them, their future will look bleak. Last week we tried to get a hold of the DCE of um, BR West. We were not successful, but this week he's with us. His name is John Kwa, and he's on the line with us. Good morning, Mr. Kwa. Good morning, my dear. Good morning, John. Please, are you there? Yes, please. Uh, good morning. I'm unable to hear you right now. I'm not sure if uh, our viewers... I, yes. I, I, I hear you clearly. Perfect. Good morning, yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Good morning, uh, dear. Thank you. This is Breakfast Daily. My name is Jifa. Thank you for being with us. What exactly is going on with this school? And I've heard that there are several schools like this within the community. Yeah, my dear, let me, uh, uh, this is opportunity to preach. 
that uh, carried uh, 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 listeners and viewers as well. Uh, and welcome them to their work in the Western North uh, uh, region of Ghana. Their work is a border town, but it is the second largest uh, district in the whole of the Western North region. Apart from the DNA and also the five municipalities, it is a Koku farming district. The economy is largely uh, 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 agrarian, and so you could imagine the number of schools in the in the district. In fact, uh, if you where we were in Western region. Probably the SGME had the largest number of schools. Then from there, uh, the, the next was uh, their work. And so, my dear, you could see the uh, daunting uh, uh, challenges that the assembly is faced with. Over 102 primary schools, over 65 JHS, and uh, on assumption of office in 2017, we quickly have to look at the infrastructure deficit in the district. If I have to speak, uh, we cannot have 30 percent standard classrooms in the whole of the district. And so the, the issue, the challenge is enormous. And so it is not um, something that we have neglected over the years. There are objects in the same and uh, similar situation. But we all know that within this four and a half years or four years, there are about and a half to four years we will not be able to tackle every classroom that has that stage in, 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 within the period. However, um, we are making frantic efforts to get almost our uh, schools, uh, as we are not getting the standard, something that uh, was to do. I, 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 I heard that you were looking at how do we break that cycle. Yes, uh, it will take time. Because we are looking at resources that are available for us to tackle this uh, number of schools that are under, under uh, intolerable conditions. But thank God, uh, the other time when the story broke out, uh, the, my regional minister uh, for Western North quickly, you know, already has a project, one study desk for a uh, people. That school has been supplied with 50 of the of the of the uh, uh, regional administration uh, project and so the situation is not as it was reported earlier. Then again let me use the opportunity also to thank uh the CEO uh CUDA, that is the CUDA Development Authority, who was also in the district to visit and uh, ongoing uh CUDA project. In fact it was on that same day that the story came out. So we are also assured that, that uh, getting us, um, a, a contractor to work on that, uh, that project. So in every is given that a blessing somewhere. I think that that is the issue. Uh, there are a number of them in the district. We are tackling them. We are asking communities to support the assembly. Those communities who would come with um, a labor, then the assembly will support them with building uh, uh, materials. Uh, to also help in, in, in getting better business for our students. So, maybe uh, that is the situation we find ourselves. Uh, it is not the best of uh, the situation, but let us, let us, uh, um, uh, there with us. With time, we will get there. With time, we surely get there. So, Mr. Koa, thank you for updating us on the progress that have been made as far as the particular school in, in that district is concerned that uh, we are looking at the Etienne du Kuma DA primary and JHS, but this is a community that contributes a lot to the revenue of this nation. You mentioned that it's a cocoa growing community. Most of the people there are farmers. Shouldn't we as a nation have a higher responsibility for the well-being of children there beyond these few people who have contributed to fixing this problem? Shouldn't there be more of a sustainable way of ensuring that you never get to this point again in future? But yeah, I, it's, it's my, my name is Jifa. Yes, uh, yes, I uh, say, my dear. Yes, it's a, it's a welcoming thing, you see. That is the issue we have raised over, over, and over. That as uh, 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 a cocoa growing uh, district. My dear, the biggest challenge 
I, as the institution executive, I am, is that the bulk of cocoa that comes from that end. So, you know, cocoa is not tax. So, more or less, cocoa is taken out of the system uh, to develop Ghana. You go to our universities, this uh, hall of residency, most of them were built with cocoa farms. When you go to mining communities, let me use the journey and also the farm municipality, they are uh, mining companies in those areas. In fact, uh, royalties that are paid to the assembly are helping the assembly to develop. In our case, we don't have that, that, that facility, we don't have that, that, that opportunity. And so, uh, it's about time that Ghana Cocoa Board and all our other agencies will come to the realization that where cocoa is grown to support the economy of Ghana, such such situations that we find ourselves uh, on, uh, on, on the internet, everybody is uh, commenting on it, we should not see it. So we are praying that cocoa board have, have part of their corporate social responsibility must also come out to help those that are producing cocoa to support the, the economy of Ghana. Also, looking at the video, I don't see the students with books, I don't see them with pens, I don't see them with materials that will help them really be competitive academically. So beyond the desk and, and, and the changing of the environment, what more needs have you seen and what kind of advocacy are you doing to ensure that they are well resourced to perform well and, and excel academically? I think that, I, I, let me thank you for, for the question. Education, yes. If we think that it is, it is uh, expensive, then the, the, the principle is that let us try ignorance. We would encourage our parents. Yes, government on its own is doing everything to provide a continual atmosphere for our, our kids. Our parents must also have answers and those exercises and such a thing must be part and part of their responsibility. Yes, the this assembly, we are, we are doing our best. Apart from what uh, the, the original minister admitted, we have also contracted uh, uh, somebody, a company that also will come, a number of uh, uh, furniture has also had other schools that are in similar uh, situations. And so uh, it is not the best. Uh, again, at this very point, let me call appeal to the general public in the world that you want to be also to come because this uh, future and the year. They are, in fact, our future leaders. And that, I think, seeing that it, it, the, the development of the country must be seen in a holistic manner. If Accra is developed and the industry that are producing cocoa to support Accra and the rest are not developing, it means the country is not developing. And so we must not see it as a corporate responsibility as, and that we, we all have to. <laughs> Yeah, so when we spoke to Kofi Asari last week, who's the director of the African Education Watch, he, worked, he told us that there are several schools within the districts that have the same challenge. What's the status of those schools as well? Um, you see, as I indicated earlier, we have over, um, apart from SCM, the next district with the highest school will be the award. And so, no matter individual effort, no matter what we put in, we still have to do uh, a lot. Uh, yes, the uh, party and the rest are doing everything uh, uh, to do. Uh, I think that we we'll still act like a liberty. While thanking them, we still ask them for more to make the green mind of our, our crew. Thank you very much, Mr. John Kwa, for being with us. He's a DC of BR uh, West. We are, I, I, we are, yeah, thank you, Jifa. I am equally grateful for the opportunity. Uh, we'll link up later. Anytime I come to a car, we'll come. You, you, you're still live on TV. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> um, and we're glad that they've found solutions for the children. Of, of, of that school because it's really important. It, it, it does not make sense that they didn't have desk, they didn't have a, a proper place to sit. But according to the DC, that has been done as a DC for BR West. So we'll find one of our correspondents to go out there and give us an update on what the school looks like now and maybe have some of the children also share how they're feeling about their new school environment. But it shouldn't take this video going viral for the nation to do the right thing this is a community that contributes a lot to our national development as far as the cocoa we need to get the revenue 
to, to implement some of the projects we have in this nation. The barest minimum we can do is to ensure that the children of these farmers are well taken care of. And I don't mean scholarships at a tertiary level, but even at the primary level, they have the right foundation to be able to grasp and have mastery over whatever subjects that they are studying. That's what's going to lead them to perform well in their uh, BCs and their WASIs. But if they are not able to do well at the primary school level because they are studying in this environment, there's absolutely no way they'll make it to the GHS level, let alone going to uh, secondary school and making, finding their way to some of the top universities in the nation. So when we talk about developing the nation, we have to be intentional that every single person is included, especially those who sacrifice so much to help us get the revenue we need from COCO to develop the nation. We have another video for you. We'll take a look at it and then continue the conversation. Hi, Mr. President. This is a road leading to um, Nyani Chrome, and the state of the road is very bad, especially during raining season. And as we all know, we are in the raining season, and the state of the um, road is very, very bad. Students and workers, there's a teachers too, passing here, we find it a bit difficult to pass through, especially this zone. When it's raining in the morning, you cannot pass. Is either you stain your dress or less. Some, some people even fell in it sometimes. So we are pleading and appealing to the district to give a help and we will be grateful. Hi, Mr. President. This is a road leading to um, Nyani Chrome, and the state of the road is very bad, especially during raining season. And as we all know, we are in the raining season, and the state of the um, road is very, very bad. Students and workers, there's a the teachers too. Passing here, we find it a bit difficult to pass through, especially this zone. When it's raining in the morning, you cannot pass. Is either you stain your dress or less. Some, some people even fell in it sometimes. So we are pleading and appealing to the district to please give a help and help. So that's the video we received at the Nyankom Junction in the Nyankom town, that's specifically in the Shama district of the Western region. And as you can see there, as the young man was talking, a lot of young people were trying to navigate their way around the road to get to their destination. Now, almost every month we have a story about roads, and the irony is that this is supposed to be the second year of roads. We know that roads lead us to markets, and in a lot of our communities, without access to market, you don't have any economic activity going on because if you farm, it's the market that you will need to make your money. If you're going to school, you rely on the road. For any productive activity that you need to do as a human being, you need roads. So when you have to deal with roads like this, people struggling to get from one place to the other, you can see the impact it will have on their productivity and their human capital as a whole. And as a nation that has not really been able to develop with these raw materials, all we have is our human capital. So we have a, the, the district engineer of Shama on the line with us to help us understand exactly what's going on with the Nyankum Junction Road. His name is Mr. Felix Crunchett Taylor. Good morning, Mr. Taylor. Good morning. Thank you so much for being with us. All right, thank you. Please, what can you tell us about this specific road? Yeah, concerning the Nyanukrom Road, Nyanukrom Junction, Nyanukrom Town Road, it was awarded the year 2015. And it was, it was a, a 1.2 kilometers road, which needs to be constructed and surface with bitumen. As I'm talking with you, concrete work has been completed. The remaining work was uh, remain, uh, the earthworks, and then the bitumen will also come on it. But uh, since 2015, some work was done by the contractor, and he put in a claim for work done for him to continue with the project. It's a feeder road project. And one that made an inquiry from the Twitter Road Department. Then the payment was delayed, and finally the contractor had the payment. But since 2015 last day, the contractor has not decided when he received payment. What he's trying now is a review of the contract, because the risk that he used 
on a tender rate at 2015 cannot continue with the work today. So it's hand in hand with the Federal Road Department for the contract to be written that we can come to the site to continue with the work. It was not only near the Cook Junction to near the Cook Town, but it was awarded this 1.2 kilometers from near the Cook Junction to near the Cook Town and also Aura Beach, which was also 8.5 kilometers. For the Aura Beach also, concrete work has been done that is comprising the construction of drains and curbing. And what now, what is left is the base material to be put on, and also bitumen will also be put on, and the contract will be completed, handed over for you. So that is the current state of these two projects, Yanukum, Jansha, Yanukum Town, and Aura Beach Road project, which was awarded 2015. So if I understand what you're saying, there, there are a few challenges with the contract and yes. it's being reviewed for the contractor to now resume work. Yes. Is there a way to, to, to do our roads in a way that once we start, we complete it? Instead of this current piecemeal approach we have where the person will start, there'll be issues, they'll come back. And what impact does that have on the, on the long-term effectiveness of, of the project? You know, if you look at most of our contracts, uh, our contracting, some of them have maybe little resources to take up the project, and they additionally also talk for some investment from other institutions back to continue the project. So if the contractor puts in his resources and also maybe the other resources he has taken from the farm, we're all added to invest into the project, and when it's completed at a certain stage, and was not fully paid, or it's not paid for the way down for him to be able to continue with the work. You know, the investment will be running at a higher rate at the bank. So if the contract has not been reviewed for him, which is very difficult on his side of for him to continue. I think this is what negotiation between the federal road and the contractor now. So I hope when all these things are resolved, the contractor will be at the, street, uh, at the side for him to continue with the project and continue for people to have also a good future of it. So you, you, you are an engineer, so I'm sure you know that how transformational fixing roads like this will be for the lives of the people there. How do you feel when you see stories or hear stories of communities like these that contribute so much to our national development struggling with a problem as basic and essential as, as roads? Uh, in fact, it's sudden. Uh, I'm just also living at the of group. And even this morning, since yesterday evening after this morning, it has rained. And applying the road is very, very difficult. So we we'll all have the feel of it. But the selection that we can do if the person has not been with for the person to move to the side to continue the way. So, so from where you sit, what's, what's the way forward? And how do we ensure we don't have some of these problems in future? According to the Federal Road Engineer, the payment was delayed because of the transition. So 2015, when it was awarded, we are in the transitional era. That, support, that, that causes the delay of the payment. So certain measures have to be put in place, whether transition or whatever. System has to run. Contractors should also access their uh, payment right, rightly for them to continue with the work. So we have to restructure our system so that uh, anyone who is engaged in any contract work can continue smoothly to complete the project on time for the people also to have a good feel of it for their issues. And, and how does this contribute to hindering the development of the, of the specific community? Because I'm, I'm, I understand that's a very important road uh, with major companies like Zeal Environmental Technologies there uh, and Zoril as well, right? So if the road was fixed, I can imagine that more companies would want to move into that community, more development will happen, a lot of economic activities will take place. But because of this one variable, everything is, is now pretty much stagnant. Yeah, so as I said, <laughs> There's nothing we can do now because the one who invested in the road hasn't continued to work, uh, but it, it didn't go, got his money on time. 
the time that he got the money to buy some items out of right right uh, resting up and now he's looking uh, seeking a uh, negotiation with the uh, the project the, 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 yeah the project managers. So I hope this thing will, should be resolved as early as possible for him to resume at the site to the project for. Thank you very much, Mr. Crunchy Taylor, for being with us. He's a district engineer of Shama, and as I mentioned earlier, there are a lot of companies in that area that pay taxes, and they're, all they're asking for is the road to be fixed, right? There are a lot of young people there who need to be productive, and if the road is hindering their growth, we can't get ahead as a nation. And it, it's, it's even more sad because this year is supposed to be the second year of roads. This is the year that we're supposed to fix all of our road problems because we know the, the role that the roads play in our economic development. So if we have issues like this where people can't get from one place to the other, people can't access the markets, communities and businesses are struggling because of the nature of the roads, then we, we, we are doing this to ourselves, right? And we cannot continue to do this. We will speak to some of the authorities in that Shama district next week to understand how far they've come. We can't talk about issues with contractors and, and not understand that there's a bigger problem, right? We need to fix this for a lot of things to take off. And if we are not able to do that, then people will feel stuck. They will feel stuck economically. They will feel stuck um, socially. They will just not understand the way forward. But if we fix this road, more businesses will move in. More people will be productive more innovations will come out of there and all of that revenue will feed into our national development so we need to get to a point where we understand if something is happening in shama it directly impacts us in accra it directly impacts our nation and until we're able to fix issues like our roads we won't be able to be competitive the way that we want to see because there are other nations that don't have to deal with this and they are maximizing every single hour that they spend on, 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 on their work. But if we can't do that, if, if cars are stuck on a road when it rains, people are, people are struggling to figure out their way forward. Again, this is Hello, Mr. President. It's a segment of the show that's focused solely on you and issues you're facing within your community. If there's anything at all that you're going through that you want us to know, please take your phone out and record an up to one minute video. Send that video to us via the email, hello, Mr. President TV at gmail.com. And the WhatsApp line is 0550-585832. If you don't have a phone, don't worry. Just text it to us, okay? 250 words or less. Uh, send that to us at hello, Mr. President TV at gmail.com. The WhatsApp line again is 550 585832. Thank you guys so much for staying for this edition of Breakfast Daily. There's a lot that's going on, um, but we would ask everyone to be a citizen and, 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 and actively also participate in your own development because that's the only way that we, we can get ahead. The census people are still going around when they knock on your doors. Please embrace them and, and, and give them all the details that they need. Um, if you missed any segment of the show, head on over to our YouTube page, that's CityTube. Comment, share, like, and don't forget to subscribe.